Hi friends, in this tutorial series, we'll be implementing examples using Spring Boot 3 and Swagger. In one of the previous tutorials, we saw the basics of Swagger and OpenAPI specification. Also, in another previous tutorial, we implemented Swagger configuration for Spring Boot 3 and basic authentication example. In this tutorial, we'll be implementing Swagger configuration for Spring Boot 3 JWT authentication example. For this, I'll be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So, go to Spring, Spring Boot 3. In Spring Boot 3, go to Spring Boot 3 Swagger examples. The example that we'll be implementing today is Spring Boot 3 JWT Swagger example. In one of the previous tutorials, we looked at the basics of Open API and implemented Swagger configuration for Spring Boot 3 MySQL JPA CRUD example. You can go through this tutorial here. Also, in another previous tutorial, we implemented Spring Boot 3 JWT Hello World example. So, go to this tutorial here. So, in this tutorial, we looked at the basics of JSON Web Token. So, first we looked at the drawback of basic authentication. Then the session IDs, we looked into the details of JSON Web Token, why we should be using it. And then we implemented an example using Spring Boot 3 and JWT, where we understood the flow, including all the Spring security classes that are involved in the JWT authentication process. You can go through this YouTube video here. So now for the Spring Boot 3 JWT example that we implemented previously, we'll be adding the Swagger configuration. For this, we'll be downloading the source code. So go below. So here I have given the source code for this example. Download this. This is a Maven project imported in Eclipse. So here in Eclipse, I have imported the Maven project that we just downloaded. Click on the pong.xml. Run as Maven install. So this will download all the dependencies that we have mentioned in the pong.xml. So here the build is successful. Using the Spring Boot 3 project, we perform CRUD operation on the MySQL database. So we'll first start the MySQL database. So here, start MySQL command line client. Run as admin. If you now go to source main java, go to this boot mysql current application dot java, run a java application. So this will start the spring boot project. So yeah, spring boot JWT application, it has started on port 8080. So let us begin with the swagger implementation part. For this in the pom.xml, we'll be adding the swagger open API dependency. Copy this. Go to Eclipse. And here go to pom.xml. Add this dependency. And we stop on this application and running the form.xml again. Let us now again start the Spring Boot 3 project. Run as Java application. So in the project it has started on port 8080. If you now try to access the Swagger UI using this URL Swagger UI slash index.html. So here we can see that we got 403 error. So we are not authorized to access the Swagger UI slash index.html page. Let us have a look at the Spring security configuration that we had implemented for the Spring Boot 3 JWT project. So if we go to web security config. So here previously we had whitelisted the URL slash authenticate using which we were able to generate the JSON web token. Next along with the slash authenticate URL, we'll also be whitelisting the Swagger URLs. So for this, we'll be modifying the web security config class. These are the URLs that we'll be whitelisting. This includes the Swagger UI uh, wildcard, which includes Swagger UI index.html and also the slash authenticate URL using which we'll be generating the JSON web token. So copy this. So now instead of whitelisting just the slash authenticate URL, we'll be whitelisting all the strings that we have specified in this whitelist URL. So stop this project and let us start it again. So here it has started. If we now again go to this localhost ATT slash swagger UI index.html, refresh this. So now we are able to access the swagger UI because we have whitelisted this URL in Spring Security Configuration. Next, let us check if the APIs that are listed here, they work properly. So one of the API is the slash employees API. So click on this, try it out, execute. So here we are getting the error code 403. So we are not able to still make use of this APIs using Swagger UI. Next, we create a class named Swagger config for which we make use of the configuration annotation. In this class, we'll be creating a bean of type open API. So using this open API bean, we'll be defining the Swagger configuration for a Spring Boot 3 JWT project. So here we create a new open API bean and we give the title for the Swagger configuration as Java News Authentication Service. The important thing here is that using the components method, we specify Java in use security scheme and for the scheme we specify is of type bearer and the bearer format is JSON Web Token. So here we are specifying that the Swagger configuration that we are configuring, it makes use of JSON Web Token. So let us create the Swagger config class. Here in config package, we'll be creating it. Copy the contents of this class. Again, stop the project and start it again. 
So here the project data started now. So now go back to the Swagger UI, refresh it. So now we can see in Swagger UI this lock symbol. So currently it is unlocked. If we click on this, here we'll need to put the value of the JSON Web Token so that when making use of this API, this JSON Web Token will be used. If we don't want to enter the JSON Web Token individually for all these APIs, here above there is this authorize button. So here we'll need to add the JSON Web Token and it will automatically authorize all the URLs that we have specified here. So let us first generate the JSON Web Token. For this, we make use of the slash authenticate URL. So this is a post call. Try it out. And here in the body, we pass the username and password. So the username was Java News and the password was password. Click on execute. We go below. So here it is 200 and the JSON Web Token, it has been created. Copy this JSON Web Token. Go up and authorize. Paste this here. Authorize. Close. So now if you'll see the lock symbol, it has been locked for all the APIs. Let us now try this get employees API again. Try it out. Execute. So now we are getting the response code 200 and here it is fetching the employee list from the MySQL database. Suppose now for this particular URL, we don't want to use the JSON web token, then you can click on this logout close. So if you'll see now this log symbol, it has become unlocked. Hope you have understood this Swagger configuration for Spring Boot 3 JWT example. You can download the source code from here. Thank you.